Hello and welcome to the Goodwood Festival of Speed 2022. It's here, we're back. This is one of my favourite weekends of the year. I've been coming here since I was a wee nipper and it's so rewarding to see how much the EV presence has grown in recent years. This is Electric Avenue. It's about twice the size as it was last year. And look, Lucid Air, new Toyota, Taycan Cross Turismo, Renault 5, Polestar, some strange three-wheeled contraption. Actually, I need to go have a look at that and a little bit. All sorts of weird and wacky electric vehicle on display this year. And as much as I love Goodwood, it is the worst place in the entire world to film YouTube videos because, well, it's chaos, it's bedlam. In last year's roundup video, I accidentally slapped a member of the public. Here's one of my favorite, Ooh, sorry, sorry buddy, no I problem. That's all right, that's all right. <laughs> However, I'm not gonna give you nothing. We've got to give you a little taste. So I've chosen one car here at Electric Avenue that I feel compelled to make a video about. And you may be surprised, but it's that. That is the new Fisker Ocean. And yes, it's another big electric SUV, but it's a very interesting one with some really unique features. So I'm gonna give you a very quick walk around it, hopefully without lamping a member of the public this time. And then we're gonna have a chat with Henrik Fisker himself. So that is the Fisker Ocean, and this is fully charged. Looking for some sunshine and clean air? Well, where better than Southern California this September? We're bringing all of the electric vehicles under the sun and an array of clean technologies to America's finest city this fall. Yes, that's right. Fully charged live USA, powered by Electrify America, is coming to San Diego. So for fresh perspectives, exhilarating test rides, electrifying live talks, and all of your favorite YouTubers, Get your tickets today. So then, Fisker Ocean, Festival of Speed. As you can tell, course past eight in the morning, absolutely rambo already. I love this place, but it is chaos to film in. So if at any point I have to kick anyone off the stage, that's why. What have we got here? Well, it's another big chunky electric SUV, but it does have a few very interesting little aspects about it that made me feel compelled to do this video today. American brand arriving in the UK mid 2023. Production begins later this year in the US. And one of the things that strikes me about this car is the options available because the entry level car starts at about 35 grand gives you 275 miles of range. So that's a sort of Nero EV ID4 competitor. But then the top spec car, 60 grand, 390 miles of range. So now we're talking about an iX3 Model Y competitor. Basically, between the various specs available for this car, it's sort of taking on the entire electric SUV segment at once. I think we'll start with the design because it is a bit of a looker. It's in good company on this little stage here. We've got Lotus Electra, Renault 5 concept, handsome cars, but this thing is holding its own in their company. I really like the emphasis on the grille area here. It's unapologetically SUV-y, which you would think would rub me the wrong way, but actually I sort of prefer that to these crossovers that are sort of like, am I an SUV? Am I a city car? I don't know. This really it looks like it has off-roading pretenses and there is an off-road mode at the on the higher end models, which is good to see. So big chunky grille, nice skinny LED headlights. This one's got a light up badge. I'm guessing that's because it's a show car. Guessing that probably won't make production, but I do like it. A little bit Range Rover Evoque Villar, maybe. Definitely not a bad thing. Coming around the side, these fantastic <laughs> three spoke 22 inch wheels for the launch car with a sort of smoked carbon inlay type situation going on there. That's a lot of wheel. Not all the cars come with 22s, the launch car does. Of course it does. Really good stance on it as well. It's got a nice kind of chunky stance. It looks like a little Hot Wheels car to me. That's my searing hot take of the day. And just a few design tweaks I like this little two stroke indicator light on the wing mirror. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. I'm seeing it for the first time. Forgive me. Super skinny rear lights. That is a really smart rear end. There are so many car brands at the moment making so many new cars. It is impressive to come along with a fairly distinctive design language of your own straight from the go. And that's what they have here. Also, we've got to talk about California mode. Notice how all the windows are open, including these little back rear quarter windows. 
and the rear tailgate window is open and the massive sunroof is open. That's California mode. You can do all that with the push of the button and then you've basically got a giant convertible. Nice. Interior of the Fisker Ocean, as you can see, I'm not, well, I'm not in it because this is a show car. I'm not allowed to climb inside. Boo. But never mind. Heavy emphasis on vegan materials. There's a lot of recycled PET bottles in here. This suede type seat material is also recycled and ever so soft. Really kind of chunky aesthetic, matching that rugged SUV exterior. We've got big, easy to press buttons everywhere. Quite a simple layout in front of you. Narrow strip of information just in front of the driver, like we see on the Mustang Mach-E. Big 17 inch screen serving the infotainment, which get this, on the higher end models, rotates from landscape to portrait. Why? And this car, of course, sits on bespoke EV architecture, Fisker's own bespoke EV architecture. So there is a lot of space in this car. This is a sub five meter SUV, so it's not an absolute whopper. Its proportions sort of deceive it. It's one of those cars that looks bigger than it is because it's so brawny and chunky. It's not that big, but there is heaps of space in the back here. I can say it's passing the eyeball jack test extremely well. And then if we have a look in the boots, big spacious boots, surprisingly high floor to it actually. So maybe not quite as cavernous as you might think. There's a good bit of space in there. Also, I love this. This is so American, being able to drop down the rear windscreen. Love that. very quickly running through the three versions of this car that will be available it starts with the sport front wheel drive 275 brake horsepower 6.6 .6 second 0 to 60 not a slug uh starts at 35,000 pounds you get a lot of nice stuff as standard that big 17 inch screen the gigantic panoramic roof it's kind of standard nice on a 35 grand car not, to, not bad then we have the ultra you get a bigger battery here. You're up to 350 miles of range. A few nice little touches like the doggy windows. Those are those weird ones at the back that open for your puff to stick his head out. Love that. Uh, and then uh, with that second model, you also get the California mode that we were talking about earlier. Top model is called the Extreme. Now we're up to 60 grand. 3.6 second, naught to 60 time. 543 brake horsepower. You get a smart traction control system. You get the 360 camera and the wireless phone charger and the rotating central screen. You get solar panels in your roof, which are good for 1500 miles a year. And those are all very fancy features, but what Fisker hopes will help its car stand out among a sea of new electric SUVs is the heavy emphasis on sustainability, along with big range, affordability, and a sense of fun. Here's Henrik Fisker himself to explain. Our goal is really to make some really exciting electric vehicles, but not just exciting in terms of design and technology, but also the most sustainable. So we have worked really hard on using recycled materials. So we have more recycled materials and biomaterials in this vehicle than any other car in the world. In fact, it's about 50 kilos per car. Uh, and then of course, we also wanted to uh, highlight some technical things like having a really long range. So we have the longest range of any SUV and, or crossover in our price segment, 390 miles. Um, so we're, we're really proud of this vehicle and uh, we start delivering in November. And you mentioned sustainability was almost the first thing you said there. That's right at the top of the, all the messaging on the website as well. 50 kilos of recycled mats. So we're not just talking about seat materials here. Yeah. And in terms of the production process, is there anything uh, with a focus on sustainability there as well? Yeah, so we try to incorporate whenever we talk to suppliers. I mean, in the end of the day, there is a lot of plastics in the vehicle. So we try to actually incorporate as much recycled plastic as possible wherever we can. And for example, even the wheels, uh, the aero wheel covers here, they have- These are beautiful. It looks like forged carbon, doesn't it? Yeah, it's carbon. actually, this is actually recycled carbon ah. and then it's a recycled plastic. Recycled carbon. Yeah, recycled carbon. Yes. So we, you know, we use that all over and also in, in the interior, like you talked about, and also even you're trying to avoid uh, using toxic glues, etc. So we just spend a lot of time figuring out what are the right materials and working with our suppliers 
And you know, we have a goal of making a carbon neutral car in uh, 2027, which is a very tough goal, but this is, we are starting kind of working towards it. And I think it's about, you know, making people feel good about driving a car again. It's almost like it's become almost criminal to drive a car or you get fined all the time. I mean, you have congestion charge in London, etc., And you've got politicians that want to ban SUVs and sports cars. So I think as an industry, we have to kind of go ahead and make some vehicles that we can actually live with and enjoy and can be part of society. So big range, one of the key features that you're advertising yeah. on this car. We don't have battery specs yet, but just give me some idea. I'm, I'm guessing that's not just that you fitted a huge battery, but also efficiency with the design. Yeah, I mean, we used a lot of efficiency for the powertrain. We actually have a decoupling powertrain. So when you just drive straight, you're not, you're not using both the motors. Nice. And then there's a lot of other efficiencies around the powertrain. We got a silicon carbide inverter, mm. which is very fairly expensive, but it gives much more efficiency. Like I mentioned, we have special tires made for the super long range. Yep. And then we use two different, uh, I mean, we also did a lot with aerodynamics, but I didn't want to do a point where you ruin the design where it just becomes a jelly bean. So we did a lot on the underbody. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's kind of, you still want to kind of look good, you know? I know what you mean by jelly bean design, yeah. Yeah, so we kind of stayed away from that. But then we have two battery technologies. Yeah. And the idea here was that some people obviously want an affordable vehicle and they may not need the super long range. Because the truth is most people don't drive over 50 miles a day. So we have a base vehicle that starts at about 35,000 pounds. And that has what we call LFP technology. And LFP don't have any cobalt and it has uh, less sort of expensive uh, raw materials in it. So that has not been affected so much by all the price increases. So we can still hold that price of 35,000 pounds and you still get uh, about 200 and 75 it's miles. It's not a small range, right? Yeah, it's still a long range. Yeah. And I think it's still one of the best in the class, but it kind of gave us that ability to get the price down for the vehicle for the base model. Then in the higher end vehicles, we use NMC and we have a very energy dense battery pack. We have designed the vehicle to actually take a larger battery pack than anybody else in this segment, because in the end of the day, you know, it's a fairly large vehicle. So we need a larger pack if we want the longest range. Yeah. So in that one, we actually get the 390 miles, mm. which is longer than another American electric car company. More than anyone will ever need, right? Yeah, it's probably more than anyone. But you know, it means you can go for a long trip. And yes. it also means that, for example, if you have a country house, you can go out there and you don't need to charge a car to get back. Yep. So that's kind of one of the things that I think some people like. Yeah. What was I going to say to you? Outsourcing of production, that's quite interesting. It's an increasingly yeah. popular move. I know Arrival are doing the same thing. What's the thinking behind that? Is it just a sensible way of scaling as a small company? No, I think that, that look, one of the things the traditional car industry do really well is manufacture vehicles because they have done it for, you know, so many years. And if you look at a lot of the startups, everyone has have issues with ramping up, with quality. And we kind of didn't really want to take that risk. Mm -hmm. And I really looked sort of at Apple. What does Apple do? They don't make anything. Mm -hmm. Apple actually get all their vehicle, uh, all their phones made by Foxconn, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, so we decided to go to Magna because Magna makes the highest quality vehicles in the world. Like I mentioned, they make all the Mercedes G-Wag and they make BMWs, et cetera. Yeah. So we thought this is something that's important for us because we want to give our customers a high quality car yeah. right out of the gate. So that's why we went with Magna. And also it meant we didn't have to spend several billion dollars making a factory. We can spend all the money. Which then means your cars. first model has to be 100,000 pounds instead of 35,000 yeah, exactly. pounds, right? You can't really do this price point with your first car if you're building that's a right. factory yourself. That's right. Okay, really cool. I'm, I'm very excited to have a go in this car, hopefully later this year. I'm getting ahead of myself now, but can you tell us a little bit about the next two? Because we've been teased with something called Project Ronin and something called Project Pair. Tell us about those. Well, we have a, uh, we have a, a engineering center here in the UK. Uh, we call it Magic Works because we want to make some really cool high-end sports cars and special editions. Uh, they will make a special edition of that that's going to be even more uh, radical oh, off-roading. Really? So they're going to make something here. And then we, we have a project Ronin where we are trying to redefine what is the supercar of the future. And I don't think that uh, you know an electric supercar necessarily should be just another mid-engine looking car that is electric. I think that moving into electric supercars, we need something more. We need to bring some emotions and excitement mm. uh, because obviously when you move from gasoline to electric, it's clear that you don't have the engine noise, you don't have the gear shift. So what else can we create that, that awakes your senses, that makes you feel like 
that you're driving and it's a sense of occasion. So I think the design has to be more dramatic, yeah. but I also think that maybe the utility aspect, the usability aspect has to be better. Mm. And I think because we see people now moving from sports cars into SUVs, I mean, every sports car company now is making SUVs. So we are trying to avoid to make an SUV of, of a sports car, but yeah. make the sports car so usable yeah. for everyday use that you can drive it every day. Yeah. And so that's kind of the idea of this project. And also, it will be uh, a partly open car, so you'll both be, both be able to have it closed and open. And I think the open is part of kind of feeling nature, feeling the air when you drive and having fun. So that project is super exciting. It's a super GT, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like a super GT, yeah. yeah. And then Project Pair, something project, a bit smaller than this, I believe. The Project Pair will be smaller than this, about four and a half meters long. And uh, it's, it's made for mega cities, but with enough room that you can easily have five people in it. Mm. Uh, and the idea is to see how, if we could do a really exciting car that is under $30,000, mm. so under probably 25,000 yep. pounds. And it's very radical, and we designed it not like we normally design a car by saying we want to go in this segment, it needs to be this size. We, we said actually, what do young people do today when they live in London or Paris or LA? What do they need? How do they want their car to work and function? So we put a lot of unique functionality that actually doesn't even exist in cars today. And the design is also pretty radical. You might be a little scared when you see it first. Uh, so we won't show it until end of next year, but it'll go production in 24 and probably come to the UK either end of 24 or beginning of 25. Concluding thoughts then. Well, I hope that from this short video, you've gotten a sense of why I chose this car as the one to cover at this year's Festival of Speed. Henrik Fisker, a legendary, colorful character of this industry, famous for radical design, is back. And his 2.0 brand looks really promising to me. Sustainability, affordability, big range, a little bit of outdoorsiness, and just some fun sprinkled in. Do you remember fun? I remember fun. I like fun. I'm looking forward to this car, and I'm really looking forward to the big Super GT and the little cheap one that will follow next. Definitely one to keep an eye on. Looking forward to driving it soon. So there we go. Fisker Ocean, Festival of Speed, noisy. I'm gonna go have some bacon sandwiches. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have been, thank you for watching. Really hope you enjoyed that. We're so lucky to have Jack on board. I mean, okay, he's very tall, much taller than me, but he's an amazing guy, really knows his stuff, just knows a lot about cars, which is I really, really appreciate. Here's another episode that Jack did, an absolute classic. Do have a look at that. That's our latest episode just come out. Up there, you can subscribe to Fully Charged Show, and up there, you can support us on Patreon. Thank you.